Hello everyone, thank you for watching all this time. It's pretty crazy, we just hit 2,000 subscribers when I'm recording this. And yeah, so here's 50 of my Did You Know videos, which you probably already knew already, but you know, here, here they go, here go. Did you know there is a secret copy ability hidden in Kirby Planet Robobot? If you go to level 1-4 and enter a secret door right underneath here, you can get the Smash copy ability. This copy ability replicates Kirby's moveset from Super Smash Bros. Did you know that the levels of Kirby's Return to Dreamland somewhat spoil the final boss? If you take a look at each level name, that being Cookie Country, Raisin Ruins, Onion Ocean, White Wafers, Nutty Noon, Egg Engines, and Dangerous Dinner, alliteration aside, if you take the first letter of each level and put it into a word, it spells out crowned which foreshadows Magalor getting the Master Crown and the final boss music. Did you know that there is an easy way to get the max amount of lives in Super Mario 3D World? If you head over to level 1-2 and grab this Koopa shell, you can throw it here and start jumping to gain lives. But if you want to do it even faster, you can play as Toad. Throw the shell down here, crouch and jump to get crown, 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 or 1,110 lives. Did you know in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, there are a bunch of references to past Zelda games within the land of Hyrule. If you head to this spot on the map in central Hyrule, you will reach the Ranch Ruins, and if you look closely and have a good memory, you'll soon realize that this destroyed place is Lon Lon Ranch from The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Did you know that in Super Mario 3D World, the physics in the game can be a bit... odd at times? The craziest part of the physics system has to be the ice. If you crouch repeatedly, you gain massive amounts of speed. And good use of this glitch in level 3-1 Snowball Park makes it possible to skip the entirety of the level. Did you know that in Super Mario 64, in order to save space for the game's file size to fit on a Nintendo 64 cartridge, some sound effects are just altered versions of other sounds. Bowser's evil laugh that you hear in the castle is actually just a slowed down version of a booze laugh. And the baby penguin's footsteps? Well, they're car noises. Did you know that in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, one of Mithra's taunts is a reference to a really funny moment in Xenoblade 2? Mithra saying, Think you can take me is a reference to the 1.0 version of Xenoblade 2, where these Artanian soldiers have only a few voice lines and they repeat them like every two seconds. You can take me! Did you know in the original Super Mario Bros. game, it is possible to restart at the last world you were in if you happen to game over? All you need to do is when you are at the title screen after you game over, hold down the A button and press start. Did you know in Super Mario Galaxy, there is a way to get a head start against the Cosmic Mario in your race? Once the race begins, hold the crouch button at the 2 second mark, and right when the race begins, press the B button to get a massive boost in speed. Did you know in Kirby Star Allies' final level, the game references Kirby's Dreamland, which was the first Kirby game. Before you enter the final sequence, you're met with an odd structure of blocks, and if you look closely, you'll realize that you're standing on a Nintendo Game Boy. And when you go through that Game Boy door, you're greeted with a one-to-one -one recreation of the opening segments of Kirby's Dreamland. Land, even with a green and black Game Boy filter to simulate the 1992 classic. And when you're at the end of this segment, the game even plays the main Kirby theme from the original using the controller's HD rumble. Did you know that controllers could even do that? Did you know that in Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, if you need a super bell while Fury Bowser is rampaging, you can simply ride Plessy through Fury Bowser's legs to get one for free. Didn't you know that in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, the Sword Fighter class's talent art, Overclock Buster, is a reference to two separate things. The word Buster is a reference to other big moves in the series like Monado Buster from Xenoblade 1 and Lightning Buster from Xenoblade 2, and the word Overclock is a reference to how your Nintendo Switch overclocks itself to the brink of explosion trying to play this absolute masterpiece of the game. Did you know in the Nintendo Switch version of Super Mario 3D World, not only do the characters move faster than the Wii U version, but you can now do a dive in the air. By pressing the crouch and run buttons at the same time, you can perform a dive, which is real helpful when you need a bit more height. Did you know that in Super Mario Galaxy 2, when you reach the special world's third galaxy after getting 80 stars, you'll realize that Twisty Trials Galaxy looks rather familiar if you've played a certain other Mario game. That's because Twisty Trials Galaxy is a recreation of Rico Harbor's fourth mission, The Secret of Rico Tower, from Super Mario Sunshine. Did you know that in Super Mario Galaxy, there is a way to gain a massive amount of height in two-player mode? When playing as the co-star, pressing the A button will make Mario jump when he's grounded and spin when he's in the air. But when player one and player two press the A button at the exact same time, it will result in Mario doing a super jump. 
Did you know in Luigi's Mansion 3, when you reach the 8th floor of the hotel, Paranormal Productions, the developers of the game, Next Level Games, had references to their older projects. When you're walking down this main hall, you'll see different movie posters depicting their past works such as Mario Strikers, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, Mario Strikers Charged, Metroid Prime Federation Force, and Punch-Out! Didn't you know there is a way to gain infinite height in Super Mario Galaxy 2? If you jump and flutter with Yoshi, then at the peak of the flutter jump, release the A button and tap the crouch button, you can flutter jump again, and you can repeat this process infinitely. With this, you can even fight the final Bowser fight with Yoshi. Didn't you know that in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, some assist trophies won't appear on a stage due to certain conditions? For example, the moon assist trophy cannot show up on Great Bay because the moon is already there. Alucard cannot show up on Wii Fit Studio because of the mirror, vampire moment, and Knuckles cannot show up on Green Hill Zone. Didn't you know that in Super Mario Odyssey, there is a way to skip most of Cascade Kingdom? If you go to the T-Rex and capture it, and then run over this trampoline with your left foot, you'll be launched up high in the air. At this point, you uncapture the T-Rex and then dive towards the boss arena to trigger the cutscene. If you start the boss fight, you'll have successfully performed what is known as Dino Skip. Did you know that Splatoon was originally going to have rabbits as the playable characters? The character prototype started off as a block of tofu, then later on in development it was rabbits, until the dev team thought to themselves what would make more sense other than rabbits. And so the Inkling was created. Did you know that in Super Mario Galaxy 2, when you reach the 6th world's 3rd galaxy, Throwback Galaxy, you'll realize that this galaxy is actually a recreation of Womp's Fortress from Super Mario 64. The boss of this galaxy is the same Womp King from Mario 64 as well, who even talks about his original defeat. Didn't you know that Kirby's Epic Yarn wasn't originally going to be Kirby's Epic Yarn? The developers of the game, Good Feel, were originally creating the game with Prince Fluff as the main character, and it was originally called Fluff of Yarn. Until in 2009, Nintendo proposed that the game be included in the Kirby series and have Prince Fluff as player 2. Did you know that Super Mario Galaxy 2 was originally planned to be an expansion of the first game, titled Super Mario Galaxy More and then Super Mario Galaxy 1.5 later on in development? The game was originally just going to include cut content from the original game like Yoshi, but the developers had too many ideas to fit into an expansion and decided to make a full-blown sequel. Did you know that in Super Mario Galaxy 2, the Stone Cyclone Galaxy is pretty familiar to fans of the first game? And that's because this planet is the exact same planet used in the third mission of Super Mario Galaxy's Beach Bowl Galaxy. Did you know that in Super Mario 3D Land, when you reach the final Special World, Special World 8, the song playing in the background can sound familiar. Do you recognize it? If you have a good memory, you'll realize that this song is a remix of the Flipnote Studio song, Draw Mario. Didn't you know that in Super Mario Maker 2, there is a very funny interaction with doors in the game? If you press A on a door a bunch of times, he watches. And depending on what game style you're in, he watches with different power-ups. Did you know that in Super Mario Galaxy, there is a great reward for players that want to max out their star bit count? Throughout the game, you can come across coconuts that you can interact with. But, when you reach the maximum amount of star bits, 9,999, these coconuts change into watermelons. Did you know that in Super Mario Galaxy, when you stand on any reflective surface and look at Mario's ref Did you know that in the Smash Brothers series, just like in the Kirby series, the different things Stone Kirby transforms into are references yet again. There is the regular Stone Kirby, a spiked ball which to my knowledge is not a reference to anything other than a spiked ball, a 100 ton weight which might be a reference to Kirby Superstar's 8 ton stone transformation, Lips Garbage Block from Panel to Pawn, a good old swamp, and a shrine treasure chest from Breath of the Wild. Did you know that in Kirby Planet Robobot, the computer themed world names in the game combine to spell out a word? These names are Patched Plains, Resolution Road, Overload Ocean, Gigabyte Grounds, Rhythm Root, Access Arc, and the final world, Mind in the Program. Put them all together to spell, well, program. Did you know that there is a secret copy ability hidden in Kirby Planet Robobot? Once you 100% complete the game by collecting all code cubes and rare stickers, you can go to the ability test room to get the UFO ability. Or you could just use the Kirby Mabel to get it as well as a full heal in the true arena. What did you know that in Mario Kart 8's Cloud Top Cruise course, the music playing in this track references Super Mario Galaxy. Take a listen and see if you can guess the galaxy theme playing. Ah, uh, Gusty Garden Galaxy. What a jam. Did you know that in Kirby's Dream Land for the Nintendo Game Boy, there is a great little detail hiding in the game's seemingly simple pause screen. If you wait long enough on the pause screen and then look at Kirby...
Did you know that in Celeste, if you go to chapter 4 and reach this specific area, you can find a peculiar looking white block and if you hold crouch on this block, you go into the background. This is a reference to Super Mario Bros. 3, where you could do the exact same thing on the exact same block, which in itself is a reference to how the entire game is a stage play. Did you know that in Mario Kart 8's Mario Circuit track, there is a great reference to an old Nintendo toy? If you look at the anti-gravity section of the track, you will see that it's being held up by pillars that look surprisingly similar to the Ultra Hand, which is a toy that Nintendo used to make and surprisingly enough had its own Club Nintendo game on the Wii. Did you know that in Kirby and the Forgotten Land, there is a way to get out of bounds in Natural Plains' fourth stage, a trip to a live mall? Make your way to this conveyor belt section with a toy hammer copy ability and perform the hammer bounce jump shown in this video to get above the ceiling. Now you can take a good look at the background you never see normally. Did you know that in Kirby's Dream Buffet, the color customization options reference Kibi, which is the name given to the second player yellow variant of Kirby who was originally seen in Kirby's Dream Course for the Super Nintendo, and was the color variant that Mario creator Shigeru Miyamoto originally wanted Kirby to be before HAL Labs decided on pink. Did you know that in Kirby Triple Deluxe, the worlds in the game all combine to spell out a word? The names are Fine Fields, Lollipop Land, Old Odyssey, Wild World, Endless Explosions, Royal Road, and if you include the name of the final world, Eternal Dreamland, it spells out Flowered. Did you know that in Luigi's Mansion, Dark Moon, when you enter the elevator in Gloomy Manor, the music playing can sound familiar? Do you recognize it? <laughs> This song is a remix of the pause menu from the developer's past work, Super Mario Strikers Charge. Did you know that in LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga, if you go to this disco area and talk to this NPC... Now this is a party! I'm really feeling it! Wait a minute. I'm really feeling it! Oh, so that's how it is. Did you know that in Mario Kart 8, whenever you're on a racetrack with Goombas, besides the fact that these Goombas are extremely large, they will look towards the player whenever they get close. Did you know that in Kirby Star Allies, instead of the world name spelling out a word like the previous games in the series, the level names in the second world Planet Popstar do instead? The level names from first to last are Friendly Field, Reef Resort, Inside Islands, Echo's Edge, Nature's Navel, Duplex Dream, and Sacred Square. Taking the first letter of these levels, they spell out friends. <laughs> I don't have any. Did you know that in Mario Kart Wii, once you reach the Rainbow Road track in the Special Cup, as you're racing through the course, you might have noticed the music sounding a bit familiar. Can you recognize it? The part of the song you listen to is part of the main melody in Super Mario Galaxy's Good Egg Galaxy. Did you know that in Shovel Knight, you can input various codes on the name entry screen for save files to activate cheat codes for that file? Typing in this code will change certain keywords like knight and shovel to butt, so we have the adventures of butt butt and shield butt. Typing in this code will swap the soundtracks of Shovel Knight and Spectre Knight's campaigns, so you can jam out to the Spectre of Torment soundtrack while playing a Shovel Knight. And typing in this code will activate Game Journalist Mode, giving you super speed, a super high jump, invincibility, and infinite magic. Didn't you know that in Splatoon's Battle Dojo, there is a way to enable motion controls for the player not playing on the gamepad? In the game Sunken Scroll number 26, we can see a skeleton, that's us, with a Wii U along with a Pro Controller with a Wiimote strapped to it with a certain button combination pressed. If you go into the Battle Dojo and connect the Pro Controller with this combination, you can use motion controls in this mode, although I wouldn't say that it's intuitive. Did you know that in Super Mario Odyssey's Metro Kingdom, New Donk City, there are many references to the Donkey Kong series within the city itself. The license plates on the cars have 1981-ND on them, which is a reference to the year the original Donkey Kong arcade game released. The street names are also references to different characters from the series, such as Cranky Kong, Squawks, Dixie Kong, K. Rule, Rambi, and Ratley. Did you know in Super... Did you... Did, did you know in Super... <laughs> what is going on, man? What, what is this? What, how did this even... How does this even happen? Did you know that in Super Mario 64, once you beat the game and see the end credits, if you happen to have a second controller connected, you can move the joystick to move the camera in the credits. Did you know that in Super Mario Sunshine, the paintbrush that Bowser Jr. uses was made by Professor E. Gad from Luigi's Mansion, who also made the Poltergust and Flood. But in Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, Bowser Jr.'s paintbrush no longer has the E. Gad logo, so what happened there, eh? Huh? What happened, what happened there? Did you know that in Kirby and the Forgotten Land, just like the previous games in the series, the different world names spell out a phrase. You have The Natural Plains, Everbay Coast, 
Wandaria Remains, Winter Horns, Original Wasteland, Redgar Forbidden Lands, and Lab Discovera, which all together spell out New World. Did you know that Super Mario Bros. 2 was the first game to introduce Shy Guy and ever since then, Shy Guy has shown up in many different Mario games? But he hasn't gotten any design updates and that is because he's perfect and without flaw. Did you know that in Xenoblade Chronicles 3, when Noah is using his sword Lucky 7, because the sword is so powerful, if Noah doesn't want to kill the enemies you are fighting, he'll use the dull edge of the sword to not completely obliterate the enemy. Did you know that there is a way to skip the entire Moon Cave segment in Super Mario Odyssey? Now you may be asking, but C.com, I don't want to skip the Moon Cave- You do. Make your way over to the Sphinx and jump onto its head. Do a ground pound jump, throw Cappy, bounce off Cappy, and maneuver to this exact spot on the wall. Then hold left to wall jump off of the other wall and dive over to skip the cave completely. Did you know that in Persona 5, when you start a battle, you can hear some nifty jazz music playing in the background? This is a reference to how Persona 5 created the entire concept of jazz music. Dang, this kind of giving me Persona vibes. Did you know when you beat the post-game boss of Kirby in the Forgotten Land, you get a copyability blueprint for the... Last chance for spoilers, get out while you still can, okay. Morpho Knight Sword, which has some extra attacks that are different from the regular sword attacks. You can hold the guard and attack buttons on the ground to release phantom forgos that chase down enemies, and hold the same buttons in the air to perform Morpho Knight's wave attack. Did you know that in Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, the developers of the game, Retro Studios, hit a reference with their previous work on the Metroid Prime series. If you head over to level 1-B and look in the background, you can see Samus's gunship. Did you know that in Kirby Star Allies and most other 2D Kirby games, the stone ability will transform Kirby into a stone sculpture referencing the series and developers? These transformations are regular stone Kirby, King DDD from DDD's Drum Dash, a brick block from the Mario games, the Robobot armor, the friend circle Kirby doing his victory pose, a star block, the oddly specific tuna sword from Return to Dreamland, QB from Box Boy with Mount Fuji in the back, Garanza and Sectonia from Triple Deluxe, Dark Nebula from Squeak Squad, Grill from Superstar Stacker and Brobo from Blockball, the Macho statue, Magalore from the Kirby Clash games, Kirby's 25th anniversary logo, the HAL Laboratory logo, Susie and Ribbon, Captain Vol and Meta Knight from Superstar, Marks from Superstar, Rick, Kine, and Koo, Gooey, Magalore flying the Star Cutter, Adeline and Ribbon, Meta Knight, King DDD, and Bandana D, the Three Mage Sisters, Dark Meta Knight, DeRoach, Susie singing from Robobot, Terenza with the Dreamstock, and if I missed one, I swear to God.